Hey, uh, my name's uh, Ed, and um, I'd like to take a couple of minutes of your time and talk to you about lithium-ion batteries. I know you know everything there is to know about lithium-ion, but what I want to talk to you about is putting a lithium-ion battery in your backcountry skiff or your small boat. I've taken a minute here this afternoon uh, after fishing for a while in uh, Whitewater Bay in the south part of the Everglades out of Flamingo Dock. And um, I've been uh, doing this for 30, 40 years. And recently I got rid of my 20-year-old uh, skiff and thought I'd upgrade to something new and modern and uh, lightweight. And uh, that's what I went and did. And since I was getting a lightweight skiff, I said, well, let's just maximize all that using some new technology. And of course, I've thought about lithium-ion batteries. A lithium-ion battery of a 50 amp size weighs 17 pounds, while a similar 50 amp lead acid battery weighs 50 pounds. So when you talk about two trolling motor batteries and one house battery or crank battery, you're talking about a substantial amount of weight savings. So with that in mind, I went to the uh, rep of this uh, boat manufacturer and I said, what do you think about lithium ion? And he said, yeah, baby, let's go. Well, little did I know that uh, he didn't know too much more than I did about lithium ion. And as it turns out, you just cannot take a lithium ion battery and put it in where you pulled out a lead acid battery from. They are not interchangeable. And that is the most important message that uh, you can get. You've got to understand these batteries. They're a fabulous technology. They're going to be the technology of the future. But if you're putting lithium ion batteries into your backcountry skiff, you've got to put in a system. And that system has got to be compatible with each other, the chargers, the uh, AC charger, the on-the-run charger. Uh, all of that along with a proper voltmeter and or an m hour meter, uh, these all have got to be in place. Otherwise, you're going to wind up spending the night out here in uh, this beautiful spot now. Knowing that I'm going to get home tonight, I'm not so worried about it. But the uh, mosquitoes are going to get bad here in a few hours. And uh, you don't want your house battery uh, to uh, go down. So stick around for a few minutes, and uh, by way of introduction, uh, this is what I intend to talk about, and let me uh, expand upon this uh, shortly. So uh, let me uh, show you some of the uh, types of uh, equipment that uh, are not compatible with lithium batteries. Uh, these are items that you've probably been familiar with for uh, quite some time. Um, I had... Uh, these two units on my uh, uh, Hughes Redfisher for many, many years, and they're, they're, they're excellent units, but not uh, with uh, lithium. Let me start by talking about this uh, Pro Sport, Pro Mariner, Pro Sport uh, AC charger. Well, if you look at the uh, product insert, on this device you'll see that it is not rated for lithium and um, that is a real concern to me uh, my question is will this charger fully charge a lithium battery or will it cut off uh, early will it overcharge a uh, lithium battery and uh, overheat the battery that is an issue um, so even though this is an excellent device which worked great on my lead acid batteries in my uh, Red Fisher for many years, uh, you can see now it's sitting on the deck of this, uh, getting, of this boat uh, getting ready to be shipped off uh, on eBay. Um, and I might say uh, that's because the uh, boat manufacturer wouldn't acknowledge that, uh, that it, he put in a AC charger that really didn't uh, didn't work, and then uh, I have this other uh, Dual Pro on the run charger, which is also sitting on the deck, and uh, uh, I don't think that it has any value with uh, a lithium uh, ion battery. So I've, uh, at my own expense, have uh, taken these out and started again. The third uh, 
item I want to point out to you is a standard uh, die hard uh, battery charger and uh, while this is a uh, standard great charger for lead acid batteries and probably AGM it uh, is not going to guarantee you a full charge on your lithium batteries. I think that when it shows full charge on one of these standard conventional chargers uh, it's going to give you about an 85 percent charge on your lithium battery and I don't think it's a good idea to leave the dock with an 85 percent charge on your battery because you just don't know what kind of a day you're going to have. So um, these items uh, have no place uh, in a lithium system. So let's take a look under the hood and uh, I'll point out to you the items that uh, are now in place uh, in my boat. As we uh, come in here you can see the uh, lithium batteries, uh, 250 amp batteries, and uh, the charger that's now in place is a um, uh, stealth uh, AC charger and hidden on the other side is uh, a stealth on the run charger and uh, these have proven to be uh, effective and uh, and working uh, well for me. So this is a, uh, a curve of what my bank account looked like after I purchased uh, uh, this boat uh, which falls under the heading of spurious correlations but anyway it's a, a graph of the whole issue of lithium ion batteries and why they differ from uh, lead acid batteries. This curve is volts on this axis and time on this axis. Now you all are familiar with uh, lead acid batteries. You, you turn it on, you put it on the load and you have a slow discharge. It might start at 12 volts or so and after you're running the thing for five or six hours uh, it'll be down to seven volts and then eventually go to a zero and if you're running your trolling motor you know that this is happening because you slowly lose power on the trolling motor and then you would turn the uh, uh, trolling motor off so that you don't go uh, to zero and, and lose all your power. Uh, that uh, is what we all know. However, lithium ion batteries are different you will start with a full charge at say 14 and a half volts or so and then the float charge will drop at 13.5 or 13.8 and that's where you start from and and you'll run at that 13.8 maybe 12 for hours and then all of a sudden when that charge reduces it's going straight down it's like you're going to the edge of a cliff and you don't know you're getting there and when you get there it will go to zero and you will have zero power on that trolling motor. I have had that situation where the trolling motor is full blast and then it's zero. And uh, this is a very unique situation with lithium ion batteries and uh, you need to uh, understand that and uh, protect yourself uh, from that. And that's why the meters on the top of the uh, Minn Kota uh, or any other trolling motor are not going to be any good to you. And that's why uh, you must have a uh, meter on board so that you know that the, what the charge is on, uh, on your battery. The other uh, issue that uh, comes up is what happens when you go off of this uh, cliff. Well, the battery goes to sleep and when it uh, goes to sleep you cannot, it will not take a charge and that is a real unique feature of lithium ion batteries. The way you put a charge back on this battery and get it to wake up from this deep sleep is you take any other 12 volt source and hook it up parallel to the battery in which case it comes back to life and it will then accept the charge. Um, this is not well known by many people and uh, uh, this is an extremely important feature of lithium ion batteries that you have to uh, really understand. The third essential component of a quality lithium battery system is a voltmeter and amp hour meter. And uh, this particular unit is a Victron which measures both of those components and also gives me a readout on the temperature of the battery. 
which is probably uh, a, a nice thing to have uh, with the history of lithium batteries uh, catching on fire and exploding, although the new technology batteries are known not to do that. Uh, nevertheless, it's a simple little add-on for a few dollars, and so I uh, have it on my system. But now, with uh, this meter, I know exactly what the charge is on my batteries, and as you can see from um, this uh, meter right here, I just came back from that trip that uh, I was on, and I have a charge of 26.23 uh, uh, volts, which is very well above, uh, and that's for the two 50 amp batteries in series, uh, and that's uh, well above any uh, level of uh, risk. I guess when you think about the whole system of uh, lithium batteries, that is AC charger, on the run charger, uh, voltmeter, and hour meter, you need to think about uh, altering your, uh, your emergency box. And this is the box that when I jump overboard, uh, this is what's coming with me. And um, it's got uh, batteries in it, uh, lighters, um, light, so forth. It's got a satellite uh, texting uh, device. And now that I'm into lithium, it's got a 12-volt uh, um, lithium charger. And uh, this little device that's made called a Wego from uh, Put It Online, it is a 12-volt source. And as I mentioned to you earlier, when your battery uh, goes to sleep, there's only one way of getting it started again, and that's hooking it up parallel to another 12-volt source. And this uh, works very well. Just attach the clips, push the button, and uh, it will wake up your uh, lithium battery. I've uh, had that situation, and I've done it. And once uh, you wake up the battery, you can take a charge. And what I did in that particular situation was uh, I took the house battery, which had gone dead, and I changed it and moved it up to a trolling motor battery, which had not gone dead, and um, um, was able to get my engine uh, started, and I was back in business. There is a device called an isolator, which can uh, sort of uh, prevent that from happening, but that's another story for another time. So uh, don't forget to add this little beauty to your uh, armamentarium uh, uh, in your boat if you intend to go with lithium. So let me conclude by uh, saying that I don't want to have given you the wrong impression. These lithium batteries have a tremendous amount of power. I've, I've run uh, my trolling motors uh, all day long, long days on the water, eight hour days, and um, uh, have had no problem. So. Uh, from that aspect, uh, the uh, lithium is a good choice. However, if you don't uh, want to incorporate the entire system, uh, then uh, don't, uh, don't mess with the lithium. And whatever you do, just don't pull out your lithium battery, don't pull out your lead acid battery and stick in there a, a, a lithium without uh, incorporating all the other uh, aspects of it. Unless you know how to operate uh, one of these babies and uh, this is a pull cord which unfortunately I have uh, had some experience with in prior days um, starting pull starting my uh, engine and I've always been a small boat operator so my engine has never been more than 70 horsepower and uh, 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 this, uh, this, this works. So um, whether or not you go with lithium, I think it's a great idea to understand how lithium ion batteries apply to uh, small boats because you never know when you're going to find yourself out on a boat with somebody who doesn't really understand what they've got. And uh, if you are going to go and get, get at this system, understand it because a lot of times the rigors of these boats don't. So I hope you uh, found this uh, uh, video of some value and uh, good luck on the water.